If I don't understand that, then explain it to me. How about that? Explain to me. I was in a club. They see me in a pub anyway. She saw me like a beacon, brighter than a light. And she was tweaking, running through the streets. The streets want me. Hey, what's up? It's your boy. j reacts here today, and we're back of another video. We're back of another video and we're consistent. You already know the vibes. Let's keep it up, you know. Um, and today we're going to be reacting to a Bible verse that is able to uh, stop any temptation, you know. So I'm curious on what that Bible verse is exactly. So let's hop right in and find out. Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm feel me? excited for yeah, this video me. because I know that God's going to speak to your life and I know that there's victory waiting for you. The theme of this video is this. This Bible verse promises victory over every and any temptation. So make sure you pay attention. Over any temptation? That's crazy. Really? I wonder what this is. We're going to be reading verses 9 through 15. But verse 13 and 14 are the verses that I'm speaking about that promise victory over any temptation. But let me just tell you a quick history of who Paul is speaking to. He's speaking to Christians, not non-believers. He's speaking to Christians in the church of Corinth, and he's telling them how not to be grumblers, not to be idolaters, not to be sexually immoral, and he's reminding them of Old Testament stories of the people of Israel when they were rescued from slavery in Egypt. They were rescued from were slavery. The land, but he's reminding them how they made the golden calf, and some of them were destroyed. He's reminding them how some of them grumbled. All right, y'all, I'm back. So let's get right he back in. Party had a lot of alcohol, had a lot of women. They got intermingled, started committing sexual immorality, and the Bible says a great group of people, more than 20,000 people, died in the desert because they were indulging in sexual immorality. So he's reminding them of these things, that even though God, and he says Jesus, he says even though Jesus rescued them from slavery in Egypt, Egypt in the Bible always represents the world, always represents sin, and he's telling them even though Jesus rescued them from Egypt, he says they still fell in the desert. They didn't reach the promise because of their murmuring, because of their grumbling, because of their sexual immorality. And he's speaking to the church in Corinth not to do these things, not to involve themselves in these things. Because, of course, just like them 2,000 years ago and like us today, we are also saved by Jesus Christ. We are also saved by the grace of the Lord. We are also saved by faith in Jesus. Son of God who paid the price for us on the cross but he's reminding them and he's kind of comparing and contrasting and saying hey God delivered those people from their slavery but because of their sins and they never surrendered their hearts to God their bodies fell in the desert they didn't reach the promise and he's reminding the church in Corinth hey I want you to reach the promise God wants you to reach the promise so learn from their mistakes don't do what they yeah right did. after he saved so them they just fell off Bible just like that that's that crazy that promises victory over every temptation Look what the Bible says here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to be reading verse 9 to 15. Pay very close attention. This is the verse you're talking about, yo. It's crazy. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you're going to be hearing the word of God right now. Pay attention because you might not have faith to overcome those temptations. You might not have faith to overcome those sins. But through the word of God and believing the word of God, faith can enter your life. And faith is assurance. Faith is conviction. And with assurance and conviction, you can move forward and have victory over any temptation, over any battle. Look what the Bible says here. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Paul is letting them know that those things happen in the Old Testament their destruction and their consequence for you and me who are living in the ends of the age. Do you believe that? Let me ask you that question. Do you believe that we're living in the last days? Okay. If you do believe that nice. we're living in the last days, then you should live a life that's godly. Of course, not perfect. No one is perfect. I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. I'm not perfect. But a godly well. life means a faithful life. Somebody can what? fall in sin, but they can still be godly. They feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. They repent and say, Father, forgive me. And just like David, they don't make excuses. They say, Lord, forgive me. It was 
me. It was me, oh Lord. I'm the one that sinned. It wasn't anybody else. It wasn't because Repent of anything else. You that. know, people love to make excuses. They love to blame other people. Oh, I fell in sin because of this. I fell in sin because of that. I fell in sin because of them. I fell in sin because of they. It's because they tempted me or they put me to the test. No they accountability, yo. But if we could just I'd be, be accountable. Honest, be faithful to God and say, Lord, I said, yeah, they might have done this, they might have done that. I might have become angry, Lord, but it was me. Just like David said when he sinned against the sheep when the prophet Nathan approached him and he said, Lord, against you and only you have I sinned. David recognized, Lord, I offended you. Lord, I sinned against you. You see, David was a man after God's own heart. A godly person may fall in sin, but a godly person can continue to be godly when they feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit and they stand up and repent. Don't make excuses. Stand up and repent and say, Lord, I did this. Forgive me, Lord, because I know that I offended you and only you, Father God. When you do that, you can stand up and continue to walk forward. And that's what Paul is saying. We're living in the last days, in the ends of the age. So walk a life that's godly. But look what the Bible keeps saying. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. He's saying, don't be too sure of yourself. Walk with caution. Don't walk with fear. Don't walk with worry. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, but walk paying attention. Walk paying attention to what you're doing. As Christians, we should live a life that's paying attention to how we're living, what we listen to, what we watch, what we say, who we hang around, what we're filling ourselves with. As Christians, we should pay attention to the lifestyle we're living. And that's what we Paul listen is saying. to. You who think that you stand, pay who attention watch? unless you fall. Look who we're around? This is the verse that promises victory over any. Okay, but let's be honest here. First Corinthians 10, verse 13. No this is actually a good video. So, my question is. You know, as a Christian, what is a song that's considered sinful, right? Now, you have people like, man, that's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that's tough, that's tough. Like, certain music, temptation like, has overtaken you that is not common to man. Like, you know, Lil Uzi Vert, he's like, you know, all my friends are dead. Push me to the edge. Like, you know, that's low-key, like, you know, obviously talking about the biddies, all these things, you know. Ah, man. It's like, <sighs> God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with temptation. He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure. Do you listen to that? The Bible says there's no temptation that you go through that is not common. Because people love to say this. Pay attention because this is going to be very sobering and you might get a little offended. But pay attention. People love to say, oh, it's because you don't understand. My trials are more difficult than others. My temptations are more severe than others. You do It's heavy on the you don't understand. If I don't understand, then, t then explain it to me. How about that? Explain to me then if I don't understand. Because, like, why do you keep telling me you don't understand? Like, what? Nah. He's spitting right now. My temptations are more blitz than others. You know, like a football term. They blitz me more. My temptations seem more violent. My temptations just seem more aggressive in my mind and my in my body they just seem more violent those temptations just attack me stronger than anybody else the bible is saying no that's false there's no temptation that you go through that is not common to mankind what you go through yeah somebody don't else single yourself it, out and what you go through somebody else is going through something much worse than what you're yeah. going through but look what the bible says one thing don't ever like try to make yourself seem <sighs> Like, even if you are going through a lot, don't really make yourself, like, the victim of, like, oh, my gosh, nobody else will. Like, that's bad. Like, you're going to go about things very badly, and what people aren't going to mess with the you. The Bible says, he says, that God will not put you through a temptation that you cannot handle. Anything you go through is because God knows that you can overcome it. Let me give you a quick example. I ain't gonna last a good one. That's a good one. When a mom lion or a mom that's a good verse. catches a little gazelle and they'll injure the gazelle and they'll leave the gazelle half alive and they'll let the little cubs hunt the gazelle. See, the gazelle's not full strength. The gazelle's full strength. It can really hurt those cubs. But that gazelle's almost dead and the little cubs are practicing. The mom lion or mom cheetah leaves the gazelle alive so that they can practice how to hunt. That's the same thing I want to tell you. Every temptation that attacks you, every temptation that battles against you is weak. 
The Bible mm. is saying God is not going to let anything that has that can overtake you. God is not going to let you go through a temptation beyond your ability. That's verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. God will not let any temptation attack you beyond your ability. If you're going through a temptation, if you're going through a trial, if you're going through a battle of the mind, it's weak. God is allowing you to go through it so that you can overcome it. But people love to make excuses. Oh, it's because you don't understand. No, the Bible says it's a common temptation. But let's keep reading. Look what verse 14 says. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Idolatry means things that your heart desires more than God. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as the sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. I love that. I love that Paul said, judge for yourselves what I say. In other words, you know what I'm talking about. After he spoke to them about temptation, after he spoke to them about the temptations that they're going through are not more severe than anybody else's temptations, their common temptations, but that God has given them the ability to overcome it, to endure it. And then he tells them, flee from idolatry. I speak as the sensible people. You know what I'm talking about. He says, judge for yourselves what I say. In other words, in your mind, the conviction that you feel as he was speaking, as we we're reading that verse, if you were thinking of a temptation, if you were thinking of a battle, be sensible people, he says. Judge for yourself what I say. In other words, whatever the Holy Spirit convicted you in, hey, apply that verse to whatever the Holy Spirit convicted you in. Whatever temptation you're going through, apply that verse. That God won't let you go through something that you can't endure and that your temptation is no different than a temptation that somebody else is going through. You can overcome it. Every temptation that you go through, Amen. God knows that you have the ability to overpower it. That's the Bible verse that promises victory over any temptation. You might say, how does it promise victory? Because he's saying in the first place. You could God handle it. It's, it was meant for you not to help you grow. Not that you that temptation. No, because the Bible says God does not tempt with evil. But God is allowing that battle to come to your life because he knows that you, you can handle it. So living with that idea, living with that concept, living with that logic, the temptations you go through, the battles you go through, walk confidently knowing God is allowing this, not because he hates me, not because he's angry at me. God is allowing this because he knows that I have the power, I have the faith to overcome this. I want to tell you that through the word of God, through the faith that God has placed in your heart, you have the power and you have the ability. And let me not forget the most important of all, but through the Holy Spirit that God has placed in your life, you have the ability and the power and the resources, the spiritual resources to overcome any and every temptation that comes to your life. So think like this, that temptation is just me. It's just me getting stronger. It's just me getting bolder. This is just something that God has allowed for me in my life so that I can learn how to fight spiritually. Those temptations, those battles, they will not overcome you. That Bible verse shows us that everything that we go through is because God knows that we can overcome it. What you and I need to do, stay faithful to God. What you and I need to do is keep walking forward. And every time you keep walking forward, every time you stand up again after falling, guess what's happening? You're getting stronger. Your faith is growing. Your boldness in the Lord is growing. But I want to tell you right now, there's no temptation that's not common to man. And every temptation you go through and every battle you go through is because God knows that you can overcome it. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. I post two videos a week. And I know that these videos will be a great blessing to your life. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Press that subscribe button. Yo, y'all, make sure y'all subscribe so be to him. Because I ain't gonna lie, he was spinning like some always, logic here. I know it was quite for a minute, videos, and you know. You can do so by giving a super thing. I apologize for that. But you know, I was just trying to understand what he was really trying to say, you know. So now, like, break it down in my mind. Hey, God bless you. Welcome to so that's it, yo. I um, hope you all enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Jimmy's reacts out. I was in a club. They see me in a pub anyway. She saw me like a beacon, brighter than a light.